Spooktober. Woo! Uh, welcome to another what are you playing video so I really love Halloween like a lot like way more than any other holiday it's my favorite um, I love scary things I love things that are creepy and eerie and spooky and all that sort of stuff I, I just love it I have a whole bunch in my office upstairs I have a bunch of ceramic skulls that I have made um, because I, I love creepy. I mean, look, I've got, well, this is Ammon Amroth. It's not really Ammon Amarth. It's not really necessarily spooky, but it's not, not spooky. Um, I like, I like scary things. I like Halloween. So, um, I really like scary video games. I like survival horror games. I love horror games. Silent Hill 2 is like one of my favorite games ever. Play it a lot. Um, and so about 20 years ago, I decided that I was going to do this thing called Spooktober, where during Halloween season, I would play scary games. And uh, it, it has become kind of this tradition where every year, you know, I, I try to, to queue up some games, some scary games to play during Spooktober. And... Maybe this was a pandemic thing. I don't remember. Um, one year, I just had way too many games to play in a month. So I started extending Spooktober because I love Halloween. I started extending Spooktober into November and into September. So it became like almost a three-month celebration of horror. Um, this is gonna be the first Spooktober that I actually record one of these videos for. I've been, you know, doing this stuff on my own and not telling anybody for years, but now I'm gonna tell you. So uh, I am starting, it's September. It's still the first week in September at the time of this recording. It might, this might go up next week though. I don't remember, or I mean, or rather I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to edit um, but this is going to be the first one of maybe a series, if I keep doing this channel, uh, of Spooktober, what are you playing videos? So let's get into it. What am I playing? Now, I, I do want to say one thing. Um, not every game that I'm playing is going to be Spooktober. In other words, not every game fits the theme, but the, there will be some. <laughs> for the next couple of months that will fit the Spooktober theme. So let's start with the first one, Alan Wake Remastered. I am playing it uh, on the PlayStation 5. Um, so I, I played Alan Wake back in the day. I played it when it came out. I, I played it on the Xbox 360, I believe. Um, and I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I wouldn't say it's one of the scariest games that I've played. It's I'm not even sure I'd really necessarily classify it as horror. It's kind of more, it's more creepy. It's, it's too horror. It's, it's, it's in the same vein as something like the Twilight Zone, which wasn't really horror, but it definitely did sometimes dip its toes into the more horror based storytelling. But that's pretty much what Alan Wake is. It's, it feels like it feels like a Twilight Zone, an extended Twilight Zone episode. Um, and this is the remastered version. So, like I said, I played it back in the day on the Xbox 360. This version came out, uh, I think, about a year ago. I, I don't quote me on that. I've been sitting on it this entire time, waiting 
uh, to play it for the next Spooktober. Um, and so it's, it's, it's kind of only fitting that I would start this year's Spooktober playing it. Um, and like I said, it's the remastered version of the original classic. Now, I will say a couple of things about it. First of all, as far as remasters go, I'm not sure this is a great remaster. I mean, yeah, it has higher fidelity, um, better graphics, and, and, you know, it's able to do more with modern hardware. Like, some of the, the effects that they did back in the day really did kind of push the original uh, Xbox 360 um, and presumably the PlayStation 3, although I never played it on the PlayStation 3. It pushed those systems pretty hard. So it's, it's nice to see... Uh, it running on like the PlayStation 5 where you have so much more graphical fidelity, so much more graphical oomph. It's nice to see those effects kind of blossom with this hardware. That being said, yeah, it's still, it's still, I mean, let's face it, it's a, um, it's a game that's over a decade old. It has a lot of um, quirks that uh, do feel a little bit archaic in uh, 2023. Uh, a lot of little quick time events that are, you know, kind of lame. The walking controls are a little floaty. Um, the camera is kind of zoomed in and over the shoulder with this kind of cinematic look, which doesn't lend itself to gameplay terribly well. Um, and, I mean, a lot of the animations are basically the same. They really haven't updated it anything other than like put a fresh coat of paint over the top of existing tech so the characters move a little bit janky and there's uh you know there's not necessarily the most believable looking uh, interactions between player and characters but you know for a game that is what uh when did this come out 2010 looks like it came out in 2010 uh, so yeah, for a game that's like, what, 13 years old, it, it still plays great, it just has some 13-year-old jank to it that, you know, other modern games don't have. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm not too terribly deep into the game yet, uh, but Alan Wake Remastered. Probably see if I can polish it off this week. We'll see. All right, what's the next game? Spooktober game. That I'm playing. Well, the next one is a digital one. I'm playing it on Steam. Uh, and it's Forgive Me Father. So, Forgive Me Father is a, a first person shooter, um, kind of a, a retro boomer shooter aesthetic to it. Uh, it it's got like this creepy, uh, um, almost Lovecraftian vibe to it. You're in this, uh, uh, you know, little secluded town. And there's a cult that has risen to prominence in the town, and you're trying to explore and find out what happened. Uh, and it, you know, it definitely has that old boomer shooter feel to it. There's an awful lot of, oh, here's a door that you need a red key for, and then you have to go and find the red key, and then here's a door that you need a yellow key for, and you got to go and find the yellow key. That sort of stuff. Uh, I actually started this. We went on a, a little a little trip for the Labor Day weekend. I actually started this in the hotel room on my Steam Deck. Um, it's a game that plays excellent on the Steam Deck, by the way. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun. I have a feeling it's not gonna last on this list very long. It feels like it's a pretty short game. So maybe I won't even talk about it next week, but so far, I'm enjoying it. Forgive me, Father, it's a great game. Um, all right, so those are the Spooktober games. Now let's get back to the non-Spooktober games, both ones that have kind of carried over and new ones. Uh, so the first one, the first non-Spooktober game is Baldur's Gate, of course. Baldur's Gate 3. I'm still playing it. Uh, it's it's a great game. I don't need to sell it to you anymore. Uh, if I'm honest, I haven't played it that much in the last week. Um, between the travel that we did and uh, me starting up Spooktober with Alan Wake, you know, I've kind of put it on the back burner. I've maybe only played maybe a couple hours in the last week. Um, and, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm definitely going to be putting more time into it. And I'm definitely going to finish it and get further. But anyway, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3, still playing it. 
I will mention Sonic Origins uh, or Sonic Origins Plus. Uh, I have decided that I'm going to put this on the shelf while I play through stuff on uh, for Spooktober. This is a game that, I mean, it's it's all the classic Sonic games, and it's definitely something that you can stop, put on the shelf, come back months later, and, you know, you're not going to struggle relearning how to play the game. Because it's, it's freaking Sonic, you know. It's not that complicated. So... Uh, Sonic Origins Plus, I'm going to put it on the shelf, return to it, uh, and finish the uh, original series, uh, finish it off after Spooktober is over. Uh, the next thing that we've been playing is I played Dark Souls Remastered. Um, if you recall, I have had this uh, Dark Souls Remastered game that I've been playing with my friends online. Um, but the thing is, is that we're all three adults, you know, we all have busy schedules with work and family and stuff like that. So trying to get the stars to align where we can all play together is kind of difficult. So truthfully, it's been like, oh man, I think it's been like three or four weeks. It might've been a month since we last played together. Uh, but we did play together this week and, uh, we had a lot of fun. We went, we, when we last played, we had all gotten through Sen's Fortress and we had started an Orlando. This time, we went and played and finished an Orlando mostly. I mean, we, we, we unlocked all of the shortcuts and we went and defeated uh, Ornstein and Smaug. So for each of the character, for each of the players, um, we have not done uh, the side area, the, the painted world of Ariamas. Or is that is that the is that the, is that the the right name? I don't remember. Uh, we also haven't gone and done the uh, you know the the Dark Moon Seance stuff where you you fight um, what's his name? Gwyn is the the king. Gwendolyn was his daughter, and then the other one that's not actually the daughter but is pretending to be the daughter. I don't remember his name. Whatever, we didn't, we haven't gone and fought that. But other than that, we have pretty much finished An Orlando. Uh, it was a really great stopping point last. It was actually literally last night, at the time of this recording. It was a really great stopping point. We finished the boss for all three of us, uh, completed all the main stuff in the area, um, and we had a lot of fun. We did get, keep getting some invaders. Uh, which is obnoxious, but kind of a given. I mean, Anne Orlando is is always classically an invader central. We're playing cooperatively online, which means we are inviting people to play us, uh, to, to invade us. It's not necessarily something we want, uh, but it's going to happen due to the nature of the game. Uh, but the cool thing about it is that now that we are in Anne Orlando, now that we're the level that we are, um, you know, we are much more capable at uh, dispatching invaders than we were before. So they, they typically aren't a big problem for us anymore. In fact, they're kind of fun. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the times when you get invaded early on in the game, it's by people who have been handed down like end game gear that you really shouldn't have at that level. And so they kind of, uh, there's, there's a certain degree of unfairness when you get an invader really early on. But once you get to the Anne Orlando level, you know, uh, invaders are are going to be the level appropriate for you, and you're totally going to, you know, you're going to have every bit of, as a, of an advantage against them as they do against you. So as long as you keep your wits about you, and especially if you've got a bunch of friends, <laughs> you can definitely trounce them. And again, I want to be clear, we are not looking for invaders. We just want to play the game co-op, but invaders are going to happen, and... Uh, we deal with them. Um, all right, so that was Dark Souls Remastered. Uh, next up is something new, uh, and it's Dome Keeper. It's also on Steam. It's also digital. Dome Keeper is a little roguelite uh, uh, game where kind of a... How would I describe it? It's almost like a strategy resource gathery kind of... I don't know, kind of game. Kind of roguelite. You plays a little character who has crash-landed on a planet, 
and you set up a dome for survival, and then you you mine down into the planet, looking for resources and looking for technology to improve your survivability, to level up and to craft new gear. Um, and every so often, uh, aliens will come and swarm and start to attack your dome, and you have to defend your dome. You've got a little laser turret that you can control and shoot them. Uh, and you can, as you you know, as you progress. You can start adding more tools and tech. You can get other additional turrets that are autonomous, and you can get uh, uh, towers that can blast away projectiles and all sorts of stuff. And the idea is that you just keep repeating this 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 loop of digging deeper and deeper, looking for more and more loot, uh, while at the same time surfacing occasionally to fend off attackers. And you repeat this over and over again, and it keeps escalating in difficulty until either you are defeated. Well, really, it's until you are defeated. <laughs> there might be some endgame thing that I'm unaware of. I don't know. But you do just keep repeating this until you're defeated. Uh, and then, you know, rinse and repeat. It's the, the, the classic roguelite uh, loop. Um, and it's a fun game. I, I originally picked this up. I think it was a fanatical bundle that I picked it up. I, don't quote me on that. I don't exactly remember where I got it, but I kind of sat on it. It was in. It was. I installed it on my Steam Deck, and I kind of sat on it for weeks and never tried it. Uh, but then, like I said, we went and traveled this last weekend, and and I was looking for something that might be fun to play in the hotel, and noticed Dome Keeper. I was like, hell, I'll try that, and I really have gotten into it. I've really, really gotten into it, um, and I've been playing it here at home as well. Uh, but it's a great game, and it's 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 super cheap. I don't remember if it's in early access, but if it is, what's there is very polished and very playable. Um, I'm enjoying it. All right, so the last game, the last game is one that I've mentioned before, um, and that is Time Wasters. Uh, Time Wasters, for those who might not remember, it's a... Uh, it's like a Vampire Survivors clone, uh, but it has kind of a, a space shooter aesthetic, almost like an Asteroids aesthetic. Uh, and you, yeah, you're a little ship with a little, little crew and lots of different little weapons. And it's a little auto battler where you're just, you know, defeating waves upon waves of enemies. Uh, but the reason that I'm playing it again is they just added another one of these new elite missions, these things that they, uh, once, you've, once you've completed the main objectives for a character, it unlocks an additional, uh, like, expert level that you then can try for that character. And for most of them, they also add an additional one after that that's even more difficult. So what they did with this most recent update was they took the character Rosa Nova, who's uh, kind of this, I think she's pink-haired, pink-haired anime girl, who um, has, she like shoots out these like wave bullets out in a circle around the, sh the ship that kind of expands out in the wave. Um, anyway, her new elite mission that they added uh, takes place in this like intergalactic rock concert, which is kind of cool. Uh, and, you know, waves upon waves of elite enemies, which you can't kill in like one or two hits. Things that are a little bit harder than the normal enemies spawn and just kind of uh, swarm around the ship. And it, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult uh, new elite mission, I have to admit. As of the time of recording this video, I have not successfully completed it with the character. Uh, I've been struggling trying to figure out what's the right combination of, of crew and weaponry that I can build up to, to really kind of, uh, it's kind of a power gain problem. The, the enemies ramp up in, in their power and their potency and in their, their hit points, but at the same time, you kind of have to match that. And I have been able to match it to the point where I, I can survive all the way to the end. I've been able to make it to uh, I've been able to make it to like this. I think the second to the last boss is a is a snake. I've been able to make it to that one, 
and then I'm swarmed and destroyed because the snake, there's like two snakes and they, they coil around me and then all the enemies that were already there, that were already tough, are pressed up against me and I've got no place to go and they just destroy me. So I'm going to keep working at it and uh, maybe, maybe next week I will report that I have beat that. Um, I think that they've got two more characters that they need to add these special elite missions for. And then I think they're probably done with the game unless they add more characters because, or add, you know, a, a, a third tier, a fourth tier of difficult challenges. I don't know. Point is, I really love Time Wasters. It's a lot of fun. If you're looking for a Vampire Survivors clone that, you know, something that plays like Vampire Survivors but is a little different, you should definitely check it out. It is one of my favorites. Yeah, I, I got a new a new Sonic uh, stuffed animal thing. Do do the kids these days call these plushies? His head's all weird. Like instead of having his hair, his spikes go back here. It's kind of going to the side. Like like there's wind. Like. Uh, uh, uh. Anyway, I think that's it. Bye. Get him, Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Poor oh, one. That wasn't fair. I need to get this. Did Slayer actually kill the invader? No, I did. I dropped on him. But did he attack? He did, once. Yeah. He interrupted his, his heal. Alright, we're ready. That's all we needed. Yep, alright, so 